On this week's episode of the Any Center Podcast, we sit down with actor, model, and community leader, Corey Anderson. But before we get into that, a word from our sponsors. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. Uh, It's free. I could probably end the list right there, but I'm going to continue. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. Speaking from personal experience, creating a podcast felt so overwhelming. Uh, I I didn't know where to start, uh, but using Anchor was a no-brainer. Their website and app is user-friendly. You're able to navigate through it easily. It's pretty cool, guys. Uh, You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. And it's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. A one-stop shop. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. All right, episode number 40. I am here with a community leader. He's a model, he's an actor, he's the CEO of Walking in Purpose. I am here with Corey Anderson. Corey, how you doing, brother? I'm good, brother. How you doing tonight? I'm doing good, I'm doing good. Thank you for jumping on at uh, such uh, short notice, man. No problem, no problem. I'm here. So, you've done a lot in your career and... We're just going to start from the very beginning. How did you get into modeling? So I got into modeling through a friend. I introduced me to a guy named Blake Martin, and I went to his casting call for Chicago Fashion Week, and I was casted as one of the 30 models to represent Chicago and Chicago Fashion Week, which was 2014 in the ball and Row, and ever since then. Wow. So did you attend any courses, or how did you uh, pick up the skill of modeling, or did it come natural to you? It was more of a natural thing, but uh, actually, once I got introduced to Blake Martin, he and he had uh, like independent class that he would do with me and other models that wanted to get better at the craft. So it was kind of like a guy giving gifts just to be the knack to be around people and to be on the runway, and also to do like things like that. I have a charisma for it as well. So it's been a guy giving gifts to me to be able to do modeling. And once I took his class and learned under his wing, I became better at it each and every time I. Good opportunity. That's what's up. I, I, I took modeling courses uh, because it was part of a package deal, but I don't, so it came natural to you, but when you did the, you did runaway, right? Yeah. So I, I mean, I'm, I did, I started off doing like, like fit modeling, like modeling my physique, and then I started doing runway, and then now I'm into like brand and after the work on brand modeling and promotional modeling. Mm. So did you ever, because uh, that, that walk on that runway has to be so specific. You have to like, I believe you have to start with the right foot and the way you have to turn, you have to turn a certain way. If you come, you know, yeah. if you come from the left side versus the right side, that always confused me and always, I, I always tripped over myself. You you were able to just get that like that? Yeah, yeah, I, I was able to get it, but I did a lot, a lot of practice, a lot of practice, but like a lot of practice, a lot of work. So it just became to just practice and a God given ability, man, and it, it came natural to me. I so I just I constantly practice my walk either at home or you know, for a fashion show. And I feel under his wing I was able to go and block into the runway model. That's great. And that's actually really good to have somebody under your wing. So with that being said, did you end up falling for any uh modeling scams out here out there? No, I didn't fall for any scams, but I know uh me and my wife were we're looking at different things, different uh, companies just to learn more from. And then uh, we, we found them out and we contacted other people or other resources and we they told us that those were scams so we just avoid them at all costs. So we hadn't been into any scams, but we, you know, we, we use our platform to pretty much help others not get scammed as well because there are a lot of scams right here that want to take their money and do away with you, but we just, we wanted to help others not get scammed and make them be better. Exactly. So we, we found and. And the easiest way for them to get you is just name dropping, letting them, let, letting you know that they represent, you know, uh, Tom Ford or Calvin Klein or you know all these big fashion brands that they, you know, supposedly work yeah. for. So, what was the first rule of thumb that you learned going into modeling? One of the first rules I just it was just 
just pretty much have confidence and learn what genre of modeling you want to get into. Modeling is a multiple lane. You can do multiple things, multiple genres of modeling. There's one way that's print, there's commercial work, there's brand ambassador work, there's uh, underwear modeling, fit modeling. But you have to find your niche. So mm. Pretty much finding your niche and finding which lane you want to be in. Because modeling is so broad. It's not just one thing. Oh no! Yeah, it's 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 multiple uh, spectrums, multiple avenues that you could go down. But with that being, what, what is your niche? What do you feel your niche is? Yeah, so I'll tell me. I have multiple niches. I did. I started off fit modeling, and then I uh, started using my voice more and being more outspoken. So I got into brand ambassador work and promotional work. Mm. So that was one of the ways I made my transition. I got into. I did runway and fit. Those were good. Those were okay for me. But I got into God got me into another lane where I was able to do promotion work to help companies make money and also make money for me and my family. So it's been a blessing. That's awesome. That's awesome. So you were at, you started modeling in twenty fourteen, right? Yeah, twenty fourteen, sir. And then um, you ended up going into acting sometime with, between twenty fourteen and and now. Well, how was that transition? Yeah. The transition was okay. Uh, I got into my, I got into acting. I'm sorry. Through, uh, I did a stage play, and uh, a young a man heard my voice, and after I did a, a small role in his stage play, it just locked him from there. Because mm-hmm. I already had a connection in modeling, and I wanted to bridge the gap and try to do both of them, see which one I liked the most. And being that I had a strong voice, acting was one of my one of my gifts as well that I used to use my voice and let it portray who I really am. Having a strong, deep voice, you know, it helped me a lot. So then, uh, once I got into transition into being an actor. Still doing modeling from time to time, but I'm primarily doing more acting right as we speak. Mm-hmm. I was able to do a stage play and a couple commercials for like Bank of America, and I was able to do a rush. I did a, a commercial for Rush Hospital, so it's been a blessing just to be able to have all these opportunities and be exposed to these different things in the acting world while still learning the game of acting. Yeah, I'm seeing that you've been part of a, a lot of commercials. You did a Mike's Hard Lemonade. You did an ad for that in 2018. You did uh mm-hmm. you did Bank of America in 2019. You were in VH1 uh B uh a commercial for BET. Yeah, so I was it was in a VH1 commercial. I did a fashion show for uh, a clothing line called Kings Arise, and they were featured by BET and Saturday Night Live. And I was able to do Chicago All Star Weekend. I did a fashion show for Chicago All Star Weekend as well. Mm. So everybody has an inspiration in their field. What is your inspiration in film? Uh, inspiration in film, I have multiple inspirations. You know, I'm a man of faith. God has been blessing me tremendously with my craft and uh, and my discipline in my craft. Uh, just being able to work on my craft daily and just to be the best version of myself. And then I like I like all the, the actors. You know, I, I like Danny Spires. I like Danny Bill Watson. I like all the actors that were before me, Sidney Poitier, that uh, I'm learning from as well. And then just, you know, with Marlon, you know, Tyson Bester is one of the main guys. And just, uh, I like to look at some of my peers. You know, some of my peers are very talented. Not to name everyone, but some of my peers are just very good as well. I try to pick my pieces from everyone and just put my niche on it. Okay, so um, you're you're definitely not one to uh, be scared of of taking a risk and just jumping in to to, to a new environment. Um, if you were to put yourself in in a in a in a film that's out of your norm, like a genre, right? What genre would you think would be the most challenging for you to do? Uh, well, what acting is probably would be like a um, more more of a late back. So I would say like a drama, like an action film. I'm not more of a an action type of guy. I'm more laid back feel. That's my personality. But uh, that would be a challenge for you be doing something and acting like drama because you know in acting you have to act how you feel and you know to say your feelings. Mm. So I have to really get prepared to play a drama, a drama character. Oh yeah, especially like it's a crying scene or something that involves a lot of emotion. For somebody that's laid back, you need to project a lot of emotion. Yeah. How did Walking in Purpose start? So Walking in Purpose I started uh, during quarantine when we went on quarantine from COVID-19. Uh, I had a vision and a dream that God gave me about helping the inner city youth. Mm. And... Um, it was just on my heart just to really help young people be able to have an infrastructure on how to be better and that, and be able to cultivate their dreams and aspirations. So I, I partnered with Champs and Young Mentorship Program, which is just under my mentor, Von Dell Simpson, and all my brothers at Champs. And I was able to have my class on Saturdays with their course. So uh, we were COVID, we were shut down early, but I was still able to meet with some of my guys 
individually and also collectively and you were able to help those young men that, that I had be able to become better young men. And I look forward to the future of walking a person to see what God takes it. Wow. So that just kicked off because there was a sign from God to tell you to do this? Yeah. It was, I had a dream. I wanted to really help. I'm always have a heart for children and I'm a teacher by trade. I teach second grade. So I, I'm a teacher by trade. And I love to help young people, especially young kids, and cultivate their gifts and be better because our kids need an infrastructure. I always tell my wife and the people around me that our children need infrastructure and they need guidance because some don't have the opportunity that we are blessed to have. So yeah. Being that I have a platform and my family has a platform, I want to be able to ensure that I'm able to, to pass my gifts along to someone else and be able to be a listener here. And that's amazing. So you you teach second grade, huh? Yeah, I'm a uh, I'm a I'm a teacher's assistant for a charter school, so I help my teacher in the classroom help with our second graders. Oh wow, that's awesome! You you want to teach you know the fundamentals and, and basics to kids on how to succeed. Uh, there's courses that have been taken out of school. If if you were to to put, you know, a course back in a school like let's say home ec, right? Like they don't have that anymore, or like wood shop. What yeah. um what course would you implement in a school that would better society? Uh, of course, I would love to implement. I would love to see our kids have more opportunities with entertainment and learning radio and stuff for those things. But I think the entertainment field can be very lucrative. Mm-hmm. And, I don't, and I think that our children need to have different things outside of the traditional math and science. Those are those, those STEM classes are fine, but I think our children need infrastructure and the things that they enjoy. Because mm-hmm. our, all of our kids are not going to be engineers or mathematicians or teachers or scientists or doctors or lawyers. There's nothing wrong with those careers. They're very lucrative. But also some of our kids have passion for arts and other things outside of the normal traditional subject. So I would think that something along those lines where our kids have chess class, you learn about politics, you learn about sports outside of just being professional athletes and not how to be managers and DMs and those things. So I think our kids need those kind of infrastructures in, in the schools to, to generate interest because they will be interested in it to be better. They'll be more engaged. And then on top of that, they can learn what they're passionate about. And that's what it's all about. That's all life is, building your passion. That's cool, man. Yeah, that, I think that'd be great to to put like to show more of an entertainment industry side in the school, kind of like a to you know kids that are having trouble in math, show them how to be an accountant for a rapper, you know, show them what a bill would look like to go on, you know, uh, a tour, you know, have them do the budget for all that. I think that'd be a cool way. That's a really cool way. Yeah, that's good. Uh, especially now, that's a good way to get the attention from the kids because they're always on TikTok. They're always looking at these rappers. They're always looking at these singers. Show them how to be that, you know? Yeah, and social media has a platform like Instagram, Twitter, those TikTok, so they follow those things and they see their, their role models and their influences. So why not? You know, so the ins and outs is the business side. The game is, everything has a business side to it. Everything is, is for economic purposes to, to generate revenue. So, that shows them the business side and how they can be business savvy along with being professional savvy in their talent. I'm definitely for that, man. Corey Anderson for principal, man. You you need you need to implement some new changes in these schools to get these kids on their feet, man. Uh, so let, let let's uh, talk about uh, mentoring because you you mentioned that earlier. Um, why do you think it's important to be a mentor? I think that a young person, especially our young men. Uh, being an African American male in society, I, I see the value in it, like just having a positive big brother, or uh, a pastor, or a best friend, or a big, a, a big brother, just to help you out is a, is a blessing because our children need to feel their love and appreciate it, and they also need somebody to talk to outside of mom and dad and their grandparents or their guardians. They need somebody outside of that circle to make them trust and they can in. And I think mentorship does wonders for people, especially young men of color. Mm. So for any uh, young listeners that are listening on the podcast, how could they uh, reach you and your organization? Yeah, so they can contact me through my website, which is www.coreyandersonthemodel.com. And they can they can send me their questions. I can answer their emails directly as I'm facing my cell phone. I can answer any questions they have about walking and purpose. Also, I can also link them with opportunities for modeling as well as they need to. That's what's and up. Um, who was your mentor? Oh, my mentor is uh, 
I have multiple guys, but uh, Rondell Singleton has been a big brother to me. He's, been, he's my mentor. He's uh, been astronomical in my life and my upbringing as a man. I'm still constantly asking him for helping this growing as a man. I still don't know everything, and I'm willing to learn. And that's one of the things I'm, I'm learning in life today. It's okay not to know everything. It's okay to ask for help. And I think that's an important piece of society for our kids. Is just feel free to have a big brother or a big sister for our young ladies to ask somebody for help or somebody to lean on outside of their family to, to help them through life. That's what a mentor is, a big brother or a big sister. If you were to mentor your 20-year-old self, what would you advise yeah. yourself? I would advise myself just to always ask for help, you know, pray more. Um, definitely just uh, and definitely uh, channel your energy with positive things not like getting into drugs or alcoholism or things of that nature I would definitely channel your, your energy and your frustration with, like taking care of yourself eating like fitness you know prayer asking big brothers or big sisters for help just so pretty much asking for help and just channeling your energy with positive things rather than negative that's what's up that's what's up uh, what words of advice can you give young models, actors, or community leaders? So just develop their craft. Just stay with it. Don't give up and uh, learn which learn which lane is comfortable to you and excel in. All right, all right. So, uh, do you have any special shout-outs? Any special projects coming out in twenty twenty one? Yes, I got a film that's coming out called Windows is Stop. It's about the gun violence in Chicago. About four young brothers. I will be playing in the film to come out in 2021. And then a few shout outs I have is uh, my wife's business, Cutting Edge Butters, LLC. You can find her at www.cuttingedgebutters.com. Champ Mail Mentoring, I partner with you doing Walking in Purpose. They have a website called www.champsmentoring.com. Karen's Cookies, www.karen'scookies.com. Also, a young man by the name of Thaddeus Jones. He does graphic design. His his Instagram is New Chapter Design LLC. And uh, T Vision, which is a videographer and photographer in Chicago, a young man I've mentored. That's with my team is uh, underscore T Vision underscore T V I S I O N S. And uh, I want to shout out my church, Greater Grace, and definitely all my family and loved ones. I love you all. I appreciate the opportunity. If you enjoyed this week's episode, please make sure you hit that subscribe button to stay centered on all Indie Center podcast episodes. If you are an independent creator and have a story to share and want to have a sit down, please email me at indiecenter.podcast at gmail.com. That's indiecenter.podcast at gmail.com. If you have sponsorship inquiries, I'd love to help local businesses. Please email me at indiecenter.podcast at gmail.com. Until next Monday, guys. Peace.